Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Another important thing that we we'll talk about here is homologous and heterologous chromosomes. So what are they? Homologous. What is the meaning of the term homo means same and logus is derived from the word locus and locus defines position and homo is same. So basically these are a set of one maternal chromosome and one paternal chromosome that pair up with each other inside a cell. So they are like similar. In what sense are they similar? For example, you have two homologous chromosomes, right? So in that case, that would mean that uh, whatever gene you have on the first chromosome, the same type of gene you will have on the homologous chromosome as well. So let us consider this example. So they will have the same size and shape. They will also bear corresponding genes governing the same traits. For example, if these two are homologous chromosome, that means that this gene which is present here, now these two are the sister chromatids. So these, this one and this one, these two are sister chromatids of each other. Okay, And this chromosome and this chromosome, they are homologous chromosome. Why they are homologous chromosome? Because maybe this one is coming from the maternal side, this one is coming from the paternal side. So that is one thing. Secondly, if you look at them, they have same size and same shape. So a lot of similarity. Also, the genes which are present here will, I mean similar genes will be present here also at the same location. So that is why the term locus here. So if let us suppose this blue color gene which you see here, let us suppose this represent um, hair color. Okay. Similarly, let us suppose the black color gene which you see here, this should also represent hair color. But it is possible that the, their values are different. For example, maybe this gene is telling that hair color should be blue. This gene can tell that the hair color should be black. So that is possible. But both the gene, I mean corresponding to the same location on the chromosome, on both the, on the homologous chromosome, they should have the same type of gene. That is, the homologous region should code for the same gene. Different versions of the same gene is possible. So, when I say same gene, one example of same gene would be eye color. Now, when I say different version of the same gene, that means for the same gene of eye color, the one version can be blue, the other version can be black. So, this is what I mean by different versions. So the version can be different. This can say blue eye color, this can say black eye color, but both the genes should represent eye color. It should not happen that here this position on the chromosome represent eye color and here this position represent hair color. That, that should not be the case. So both should represent the same thing. So one of them is paternal and the other one is maternal. So this type of chromosomes are known as homologous chromosomes. So I hope now you understand what is going to be heterologous. Heterologous means they will differ in shape, size and function. So they will not be related to each other. Like any two random chromosomes which you pick most, if they are not homologous chromosomes, they will be heterologous. They do not belong to the same pair, so there will be no such uh, I mean, correlation between the two that okay if you have a gene at this location you should have corresponding gene in the corresponding location no nothing like that is there now another important term that is allele what is allele so allele is one member of a pair of gene that occupy a given position on a homologous chromosome so what is an allele it is one member of a pair of gene that occupy a given position on a homologous chromosome now what do we mean by a pair of genes? Now the question is how are the traits denoted? Like I was telling you that, that black hair or blue eyes or uh, the skin color or how do we define or how do we denote all these traits? This is how the chromosome is and this is how the genes are located on the chromosome. Right? Now but how do we denote them? Now the denotion happens with two letters. And what are those two letters? Now, for example, if I want to denote a trait, for example, height of a plant, okay? So, if I want to denote the height, it can be either tall or it can be short, right? But the plant also has two sets of chromosomes because it is a diploid cell. So, it will have two sets of chromosomes. One will come from the maternal chromosome. One will come from the paternal chromosome, right? So, that is why whatever comes, I mean, each 
of the trait is denoted by a letter. For example, here if I say that this one, this gene denotes the I color, I'm just giving you an example. It is suppose this is the gene on the chromosome that denotes I color. That means on the same location of the chromosome, on the whole of this chromosome, this gene should also denote I color. Now, according to this uh, maternal chromosome, let us suppose the eye color should be black. This says that the eye color is black. And let us suppose according to this, it says that the eye color is blue. Now, how do we denote it as a, I mean, how do we use it as a symbol? How do we denote it or how do we indicate it? Now, this is denoted by two letters. For example, let us suppose if I denote it by capital B. Now, let us say that capital B is for black. So if I say capital B, capital B, that means it is black from maternal side, it is also black from the paternal side. So B and B, these are the two alleles of the same gene. So that means both, both of these denote eye color, but the values of both of them, that is one can be blue, the other can be black. Similarly, it can, if it is capital B, small b, and if we say that capital B is for black, we say small b is for blue. So this is also a gene. So this entire thing is a gene and each letter is an allele. So an allelic pair forms a gene. Two alleles together form a gene. That is how it is. Let us take another example. Let us consider the height of a plant. Right? Now, height of a plant can be denoted in many ways. For example, a capital T, capital T. That means the plant is tall. And both the alleles are same here. Both the alleles say that it has to be tall. There is another possibility which says that capital T, small t. That means it has received capital T from one parent, small t from another parent. Right? Now, how do you know whether the plant is going to be tall or it is going to be short? Because the small letter is for short and the capital letter is for tall. Now, you might ask, okay, why don't you we use it like this? Why do we use it in terms of capital letter and small letter? We can also say capital T is for tall and capital S is for short. So, we can say T, S. That means what it has received tall from one parent, it has received short from one parent. Now, we do not use it like this. That's because this will create confusion. Now, one important thing that is to be remembered is that each allele represents the same gene. So, both of them represent the height of the plant. Now, capital T, it tells that the plant is tall. So, it is talking about the height of the plant. Now, if you write it capital S, then it might create a confusion that maybe S is for something else, some other trait. Maybe S can be for the seed color, S can be for the seed shape or something, something else. So that is why we denote it with the same letter, but we write it in small letter. So if it is capital, that means it is tall. If it is small, that means it is broad or short. Similarly, if it is capital, it is black. If it is small, then it is blue. Now, these are just examples which I am giving you. How exactly we denote it, why we denote one with capital letter and why we denote one with small letter. You will see that as we learn more about all these things. So this is just the beginning. So I am just uh, giving you a rough idea so that you are able to understand when we go ahead with um, more experiments and when we talk in detail about the rules of genetics. Okay, so here again if you see it's both small t, small t that means the plant is short. It has received a small t from father. It has also received a small t from mother. Right, so when we talk about a gene, a gene is always represented by two letters. One letter from the paternal chromosome, the second letter from the maternal chromosome. Right? And each of these letters is an allele. So a pair of alleles form a, represent a gene. So I hope that this concept of allele, gene and um, homologous, heterologous, this is all clear to you now. Because these are going to help you. Because if you are not clear with these concepts, you will not be able to understand whatever we talk about later. So here each T or T is an allele. So each of this letter is an allele. So now. Let us see, see what is a homozygous organism and what is a heterozygous organism. Now, wherever you find the word homo, it has something to do with same, something which is similar or same. And hetero means different. 
So that is how it was in case of homologous and heterologous also. Homologous means they have same size, same shape. They will also have same type of gene on the same corresponding location. So that is why they were homologous. Let us see what is homozygous and heterozygous. So homozygous organisms are those which have identical alleles on homologous chromosomes. Just now I was telling you right that each gene will have two alleles. Correct? And these two alleles come from the two homologous chromosomes. Now if both these alleles are exactly identical then they are called homozygous organisms. If self-bred they give rise to offsprings with same traits. So that means let us suppose these, this is a tall plant. So the tall plant can be homozygous that is it has received tall trait from father tall trait from mother. Similarly a short plant has received both short trait from father and short trait for mother. Now what do we mean by self bred that means if this capital T capital T is crossed with itself capital T capital T. So this will always give offsprings with the same traits because there is no small t involved anywhere so no short plants involved anywhere so obviously when they are bred together they will give rise to offsprings with the same traits so that's about the homozygous now how the crossing happens that we don't and we have not discussed it right now so i'll not get into those details Next is heterozygous organism. Here the organisms are with different alleles for a character on homologous chromosomes. So the character will be the same. For example, here height of the plant is the character, but one is capital T, the other one is small t. So it has received a tall trait from one parent and a short trait from the other parent. So again, in this case, now how do we know whether it is going to be short or it is going to be tall? That depends on which of these alleles is dominant. Now if capital T is dominant then it will be tall. If small t is dominant it will be short. So it is, it is very simple Panda. If both the things are present, who will win? Whoever is powerful will win. So whoever is powerful and whoever is capable of dominating will win. So here also in all the heterozygous organisms there are two alleles and the two alleles are different. Now, whichever allele is more dominant, that will be uh, displayed on in the organism. For example, here, if capital T is dominant, then the plant will be tall. Right? So, this, similar is the case for other organisms. So, we will talk about all those principles a little later. So, for now, you just understand that these type of organisms where both the alleles are different, they are called heterozygous. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt a free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.